Hi, hello. I'm Marina, that one girl that likes to talk a lot about houseplants and welcome to Millennial Planter. So today I am shedding some light on my tiniest, littlest baby plants in my collection because they just don't get enough of the limelight and I need to take a moment to highlight them. Also, this will be really fun to come back to in like a year <laughs> and see the growth because I love seeing the growth of my plants because it's something that I don't really realize is happening at the time. Like, yes, I notice new leaves and stuff, obviously, but I don't ever really remember where my plants have started from. So here we are documenting some plants and it is my tiniest little babies. I try to find the smallest plants in my collection and some of them are like teeny tiny and like little two inch pots and it's also really fun to get little teeny tiny plants because uh, at this point like a lot of my plants are at least in uh, six inch pots and bigger. They're getting a little crazy and <laughs> it's nice to have a little plant because they don't take up a lot of space and they're really cute. But before we get started, if you haven't already, go ahead, hit the subscribe button if you like plant videos, which you're watching a plant video, so I'm assuming you do, and help propagate this community with me. I would absolutely love to have you and let me know some of your tiniest plants in your plant collection. I would love to hear about it. Let's chat in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. But with all that being said, let's get on to the little itty bitty tiny plants. So the first plant in my collection is actually the one that kind of inspired me to do this video because I definitely don't show this plant enough and I can't get over the fact that I uh, I, I grew it, I'm growing it still, but it is a little baby philodendron billetier. So this plant actually, I got it at a plant swap a few months ago, I don't remember when, but it's actually from Simone Planty and it came from a variegated mama plant. It was tissue cultured from a variegated Villetier. This one, um, unfortunately, ha is not variegated. Uh, I've always heard that with tissue culturing, uh, you usually see the variegation coming through within at least two to three leaves. And if it's not variegated, if those leaves aren't variegated, then the plant is not variegated. And um, this has happened to me with two plants. So far, I have a Gigantium that that was a tissue cultured from a variegated gigantium and that one is all green uh it's still pretty small it's like in a, a four inch five inch pot but it's not variegated at all so that's the faith with this one the fate with this one and i don't mind she's super cute and i can't wait for her to get like really big and those really beautiful mature ripply leaves and just to know that i grew her from this but she was also in sphagnum moss which if you don't know i am horrible with sphagnum moss in the beginning of my plant journey i rotted stuff all the time in moss and now i have gotten better so i don't don't rot stuff as often but it definitely still happens and I just struggle and I also don't like growing stuff in moss so when I transferred this gal into soil I was really nervous and she probably had maybe like two of these bottom leaves maybe this leaf here but she's been doing really well she's her leaves are like getting slowly bigger she's putting out um a little little bit of new growth right there she has a little new leaf coming in and i've just enjoyed growing her so so much she's just the cutest little thing and yeah i just i really can't say enough cute things adorable little things about her because i think she's the cutest and yeah my little dungeon belly ta and to be honest for that plant i actually um wanted to trade for hoya but hello social anxiety, I did not say anything. <laughs> and the Hoya that I wanted uh, went away, got traded. Uh, so I ended up with that one, but I'm really happy that I did because I'm kind of obsessed with her. The next tiny plant on my collection is Peperomia Bulp. Peperomia, crap, I just said this name before the video. Peperomia Polybotria. I'm saying that wrong. I can't remember the name. Yeah, I think it is Polybotria. Anyways, a friend actually sent me this in another plant trade as well. She was in my little terrarium thing that I have, uh, but I'm very bad at keeping up with maintenance on that little terrarium. So I decided to take her out and she did go through a bit of shock when I took her out. I feel like peperomias, you know, uh, people just don't talk about it enough, but they really do like high humidity. 
uh, really and truly peperomia love humidity they grow the best in humidity but this one is doing all right and but you can see some yellowing leaves but she does have some little babies coming in at the bottom and you know actually way back in the day i used to have a good amount of ripple peperomias i used to do really really well with them and then i kind of got over them i gave them to a friend but now i kind of want to get some more ripple peperomias because i think they're so cute and peperomias just kind of bring me back to the beginning days of plant collecting because i had so many of them like i had the ruby Oh, I had the Ruby Cascade Peperomia that was doing so well and then all of a sudden I rotted it. I actually really miss that plant side note. Um, but I also had like uh, the Pink Lady Peperomia. I used to have Peperomia Hope. The trailing Peperomias are just like top tier, you know? Like those are like the best type of plants in my opinion. <laughs> Okay, I guess in this video, I need to take away that I need to get some Peperomia this year because I really do miss them. But Peperomia polybotria, she's doing all right. Not really thriving, not really dying. So I think we'll figure each other out now that she has these new leaves that are coming in and they're more acclimated to my plant room instead of a terrarium. And I can't wait to grow this one out. I really love the leaf shape of these plants. And I didn't ever want to buy a big one from the big box stores because they're just too big and too massive and I know when I bring those home peperomia just like to go through a lot of shock like they're very sensitive plants at least in my experience so I know that half of it would probably end up dying but it was also just really big and I didn't have space for it so my friend was kind enough to send me some cuttings of hers which was really perfect and now we got a little baby tiny plant that doesn't take up a lot of space and I know one day I will get those really beautiful dimpled raindrop leaves and I'm so excited I don't think I mentioned, but I do have 10 plants to go through today. So plant number three is actually my Dyskidia ovata. So I used to have a bigger one, but I gave some to a friend because I was never, ever, 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 ever able to grow this plant successfully. And I mean, as you can see, she's still not looking good. I actually took some cuttings from my friend and this is what I was left with. And I actually tried to sell her twice, not even sell her. I tried to sell her once, but then I was like, no, never mind, just take the plant. So I tried to give it away twice. <laughs> Both times just never happened happens so I'm like you know I guess we're just gonna we're just gonna tussle it out and see what happens and I treated her with some sulfur fungicide I'm happy to report that she does have the littlest littlest well new growth right there uh, which is really cool to see she's actually put out maybe a total of four leaves since I treated her and that's really exciting to see so now I'm feeling like kind of hopeful that maybe I can actually get a long trailing one the one that I used to have was kind of trailing uh it was probably like like here like this long so it wasn't like super long but it was still trailing and it was so beautiful but then slowly by slowly it started to die off and <laughs> yeah i really want to try more Dyskidia. i have my Dyskidia dragon jade and that's another one i treated for sulfur i treated with the sulfur fungicide and it is finally growing after like two years of having her and having no growth whatsoever she has pushed out so much new leaves and i'm really excited because that's a really cool funky type of plant and i just hope she continues to go down this road because they're just really stunning plants but between the dragon jade and the ovada i was like dang maybe i'm just not meant to grow a discidia which is really ironic because they're cousins of hoya they're in the same family so if i can grow hoya right i should be able to grow discidia right i don't know but maybe the sulfur fungicide was the secret and we will be on the road to new growth in 2023 at least i hope so Plant number four is none other than my philodendron Adabop Homewensi. So this one is probably like a half tiny plant because this leaf is kind of big. But this was the original leaf. I actually won this plant in a giveaway and it was just a cutting, a one leaf cutting. So this was the leaf that I propagated. Well, not the leaf, but the cutting that I propagated and it's since put out these adorable little babies and if we cut this leaf off that's a pretty tiny plant and <laughs> it's so freaking cute i mean just look look how, how cute they are together oh my goodness 
oh it's adorable but the good thing or the cool thing about Adaba Poency is that they have those really beautiful maroon back seals or the backs of their leaves you can see oh look at that it's like the only type of red bottoms i'll ever be able to afford <laughs> but part of me actually does want to cut this leaf off because i just that's adorable you know what we're gonna do it Wow, that philodendron smell, like that fresh cut philodendron smell is is really distinct, that's for sure. It's almost, whew, wow. That kind of smells like kale maybe. You know when you open like a fresh like box of salad, like a pre-made salad and it has kale or uh, what's that other stuff called? Like a spring mix, that's kind of what it smells like. I was gonna say kind of like cut grass, but no, it smells more like a pre-made salad, you know? Interesting. <laughs> Plants, so cool. But here we go, my tiny little plant. <laughs> it's adorable. This is adorable. Philodendron Adaba Poensi. Really excited to actually grow that one out too because I do have my mama here. She's actually really thirsty. Um, so her leaves are kind of curled in but a little side-by-side -side comparison. So we got the mama leaves, the big leaves, and the little juvenile leaves. Oh, this is adorable. And this one also has those really maroon backs. Stunning, gorgeous. But yeah, that's the really cool thing about Adaba Ponzi. And they're super easy at philodendron, so I really highly recommend getting one if you can get your hands on one. But wow, I really need to water this gal. Plant number five is a plant that I haven't shown in a minute, so I thought I'd give a little update. But it is Philodendron Lamanii. This one had a leaf that came out. I underwatered it, so that leaf died off, unfortunately. And then this is the newest leaf that's coming out. I'm happy to report. I'm really excited about it. I'm really trying to keep an eye on it. I have it right on the edge of my grow rack, so I won't forget about it. And I'm just like, watching her like a hawk. I was so nervous about this plant because first of all, I never thought in a million years that I would get a Lamanii and I got it in a trade. I traded a few Hoyas for this and it was in, I think it was in soil for a while in my grow tent when I used to have my grow tent out and it did nothing. And I was so nervous that it was going to rot because it was just cut so close to the node. So there was really no room for air. There was like no room for rot, nothing. Uh, so it didn't do anything for a while. And it was like at that point where it was teetering on rot. So I ended up moving it to stratum, surprisingly. The stratum, it still took a while. Uh, I think maybe my expectations for stratum were like too high, but I feel like I could have propped it in perlite as well. And it, I would have had the same outcome, but I propped it in, st in stratum, fluval stratum, and it ended up rooting eventually. It took a while, which still made me nervous, but she's here she's alive she's a little sad so hopefully we will get a new leaf soon because that caterpillar is looking really healthy plant number six is one i am really really excited to grow out i and i can't wait to see her growth this year but it is hoya hushkaliana variegata and just look at how freaking cute this plant is. Oh my goodness, I'm so obsessed with her. So she has those really beautiful pink leaves. Her new leaves, they get kind of like sun stress. And then she gets really cream on the outside, which is super cool. But I just, I can't wait for this plant to be officially kind of trailing down. It would just be the cutest thing ever and once again another plant i've treated with the sulfur fungicide and she's finally growing when i first got her she was growing pretty well uh she was a pretty small plant when i got her and she stopped for a while for months she didn't budge at all so once i got that treatment down she ended up coming out with maybe four new leaves and she's growing still like there's new growth also in the middle so hopefully we can get her to trail a little bit by 
April, May, I hope so. But I, yeah, Hush Kaliana is just an adorable plant. They have the cutest blooms too. So hopefully I will get a bloom from her uh, one day soon. I just wanna smell them. I love, love, love smelling Hoya blooms. My Lachnosa actually just rebloomed for like the hundredth time. But every time, I don't even need to be near that shelf. I can just smell it. And it's just one bloom and it is a powerful scent. It's just, I should say, it's just one umbel. Uh, a little cluster of flowers, but it's so powerful. And I love it so much. And my DS70 is the same. It smells like butterscotch. And the minute I walk into my room, even though it's hanging in my window over there, I can smell the sweet smell of butterscotch. And it's just so amazing. Hoyas in general are amazing. <laughs> On to plant number seven. It is my Raphidophora cur cur decursiva. Uh, I can't ever say those words together. Raphidophora decursiva. There we go. <laughs> um, once again, another plant that's really thirsty. I clearly need to water my plants, but I promise you she's healthy once she's watered and perked up. But this was actually started from wet sticks. So I think there's two sticks in here. And I was really excited to grow this out. This has actually been in my work office for a while. And we had a freeze a couple months ago or like last month I think it was when everybody around the country had that great freeze. So I ended up bringing her home because I didn't want her to freeze in the office because it doesn't have any heat because we have a heater that we turn on when we get there. Anyways, <laughs> I didn't want her to freeze. So now she's in the plant room and she has been really um, a slow grower which I feel like maybe is just a decursiva thing. I do have a bigger decursiva as well. I actually didn't grow for a while either until I ended up cutting her tendril. And once I cut that tendril, she shot out literally five new growth points. It was insane. And yeah, it's just gonna be so cool to grow this little gal into that. And it's gonna be so exciting to grow that into even more beautifully fenestrated split leaves. So, yeah, Raphidophora decursiva, a really cool one. I should probably get this one on a plank or something soon so I can get finished the leaves faster. Hmm. The next plant is another Hoya and probably my second smallest Hoya in my collection. I do have some small Hoyas, but none that are as small as this and the Hush Kaliana I, sh I showed y'all, but it is Hoya. <laughs> Hoya Kenyaku Marianne. I've heard people say it now. I have struggled saying this Hoya name for so long because that is a weird, that is a weird name. It's a long name, but yeah. Anyways, she's so freaking cute. And look at all that new growth there. All of that is new growth, a new tendril, new leaves. If you get the, the pattern of this video, I treated her with the sulfur fungicide. And yeah, she's ended up growing really well for me. And when I first got this plant, I just remembered, um, my friend had sent it to me in a little jar, almost kind of like a message in a bottle, you know, like you throw a bottle with a letter in the ocean. It kind of looked like that, but it was smaller. And I was terrified to take it out of there because it was like in a really perfect, terrarium situation with moss, high humidity, and I knew I couldn't grow it because it was an enclosed bottle. I couldn't grow it in there. So I had to carefully take her out and adjust her to soil. So I feel like uh, we've, we, yeah, we've gone through a lot together and I feel like she's finally happy in my care and I'm finally doing something right and we understand each other now and she's rewarding me. I actually don't know what the blooms on these look like. I'm gonna have to look it up. I'll put a picture here. We can uh, look at it and admire it together. But when these plants are just lush and full, they are absolutely stunning. I love the little waviness to their leaves. They just have such a unique leaf texture that I don't see in anything. It's almost fern-like, almost like a button fern, which is really cool, really fascinating. Uh, this is a Hoya I had never heard of until I received it, and it has brought me so much joy. Really and truly, I absolutely love this Hoya. Wow, it's probably one of my like top five favorite Hoya just because it's so whimsical. So whimsical, so cool, so unlike a Hoya. 
you know? Before we get on to my last two tiny plants, I'm gonna have a little quick honorable mention for my Baltic Blue. Um, my Baltic Blue, she's she was, she was kind of big. Um, she was on, growing on a plank and she ended up dropping her bottom leaves for no reason, just one after the other. And I checked her for spider mites, I checked her for thrips, I treated her with the sulfur fungicide and nothing helped. And to this day, I don't really know why that happened, but I ended up chopping her. I have her top half. Where is her top half actually? Oh, I potted her top half up, yes, because it was growing on a plank and it had fully attached and everything. So I just took those roots, I took that rooted cutting, I stuck it in soil. It's doing pretty well. It hasn't shot out in any growth yet, but it's doing pretty well. And this is the rooted stump. And the rooted stump, as you can see, is coming out with a new leaf, which is really awesome. She, uh, I kind of need to adjust her in this pot because look at those roots. Insane. But she's not really completely rooted in the pot. So I'm gonna have to just fix this situation. It's kind of like creepy when it's on my hand. Kind of reminds me of spider legs or something. Ugh. But yeah, I mean, technically, you know, she is a tiny plant. She's in a four inch pot, but she's only a rooted stump. I have a lot of rooted stumps actually, but we're not gonna include those. We're just gonna talk about her. <laughs> plant number eight is this Orbea. I don't know, but I would consider this maybe in the succulent, maybe a euphorbia, one of those two. But y'all, I have, am so proud of myself when it comes to this plant because once again, another plant I got teeny tiny. I mean, when I first got it, it was probably the size of this. It was two of these, just like that. And over time, it's put out so much new growth. And I was shocked because for a while it was just sitting on my top shelf in the back and I didn't really pay any attention. And one day I took it down and I realized, whoa, she's grown a lot. It's insane. And I never really thought I could successfully grow these type of plants because I'm an overwaterer to the max, like five years into the game and I'm still rotting plants so <laughs> i have to start plants over all the time because i, I give them root rot i love that for me but <laughs> here we are root rot free growing thriving and just doing the best i i can't wait to see this plant like what this plant looks like in its full mature state and from what i remember i think these plants have pretty cool blooms as well kind of like maybe similar to the lifesaver cactus i think i might be thinking of another plant i don't know i'll correct myself on the screen <laughs> but yeah a cool tiny plant and a cute little dog planter my last and final plant is once again another plant i never thought in a million years i would have in my collection and but it is philodendron tordom and look at that she's just so cute and um yeah, not really much to say about this plant, but I kind of like how chunky her leaves are because as they mature, they do kind of thin out more and get more palm-like almost. So I think it's really cool just to admire her little juvenile leaves. And once again, another really easy philodendron like the Adabaponsi and the Biliotea. I would say this one might be a little bit of a slower grower compared to those other ones, but still really, really resistant. And yes, uh, overall really easy philodendron, at least in my experience. And they're going for way less prices nowadays. So uh, definitely try to find one if you can. Try to trade for one if you can, even better. So there we have it. My top 10, technically 11 smallest plants in my collection. And I'm really excited to come back in a year's time and see and hopeful hope that my plants have had a big grow up <laughs> and none of them are dead. That's important. I really hope none of them are dead. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you made it this far, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, as always, I will see you all in the next video. Hope you all are staying safe, sane, happy, and healthy. Bye.